Halloween is approaching, which can only mean one thing, a spooky wild camp. I've done a few of these in the past. Now the island where I live is well known for its rugged, beautiful rolling hills and coastline. However, it's got an ancient past involving Viking battles, witchcraft, public executions, ghost stories, and murder. So tonight we're off to a well-known place that's supposed to be haunted for a solo wild camp, completely on my own. I'm gonna tell you all the spooky places on the island you can visit, if that's your thing. I quite enjoy these spooky wild camps. I've done a couple over the years. Who knows what lies ahead? So join me for this wild camp tonight. I'm really looking forward to it. Let's do it. This place, Druidale, is probably the furthest place on the island from civilization. Generally, it's right in the middle of the island. I've come here because it's the scene of two murders, various ghostly reports up in this Montpellier area. So we're going to go and have a closer look. I'll show you around this old farmhouse, which I think someone was murdered in, not 100% as the story goes, but I'll tell you it once we go up there. So this area I'm in here, this is Montpellier House, and I could be uh, mistaken here, but please correct me if wrong. Uh, in the 1930s, somebody escaped from a lunatic asylum and killed the owner of this house. I think they were shot, but as you can see, it's in fairly poor state. Let's have a look inside. <sighs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> apparently a politician lived here back in the day. As you can see, it's a, uh, it's in pretty sorry state of repair. It's just what you want to see. 666 carved in a tree. Satanic, <laughs> if ever I've seen it. This ancient woodland that I'm in here, there's been reports from a couple of airsofters that were out a few years ago. There was a load of cloaked individuals in a circle up in this particular area. Don't truly know what that means, but that's where I'm going to camp. But yeah, very uh, eerie looking place, isn't it? What do you think? Do you guys believe in ghosts? Definitely remnants of a campfire. There's been people here then. This looks quite flat. I think this is the spot. Let's do it. Pumpkin for later. The Lansham one. Everything's in there now. If you're claustrophobic, the Lansham one is not the tent for you. Okie doke. So what have we got here tonight? Obviously, I've got my pumpkin, folding air, one tiger stove, wayfarer meals. This is really cool, UCO candle holder, really nice for it of ambience. Jet boil, I brought my fillet knife from the boat just to do the pumpkin. That's my fire lighting kit, folding wood saw, water bottle, and first aid kit, both from Food Arc. Valiant Peak, that is for all my electronics uh, to keep them from dying overnight. Sunset now over the tops. So it won't be long before we're in darkness, all on our own. Just gonna have a quick recce for firewood, explore the area. Obviously we've seen that 666 on the tree, you never know, there might be more unusual things around. Let's have a skeet. Plenty of wood to get a fire going. This is one of the island's dark zones, so there's no light pollution in this area at all. Really good for stargazing and some weather's ripped that down, hasn't it? Tell you what, you can bivy camp in there. Nice, I can never resist a bit of a walk up a tree. Have a ski. Get that. 
survey our area. You see Snaefell up there? That is where I camped in the 80 mile an hour winds last winter. Looking forward to doing more adverse weather camping. Doesn't look to be much more in this ancient woodland. Uh, a lot of the woodlands on the island were uh, planted post World War II for employment, but this isn't one of them. This has been here for a long time. Bring you back when we start getting dark. We'll start the ghost stories and the various haunted areas on the island. There's quite a few. This place is unreal. Mushrooms galore around here. I'm not really up on foraging. I don't really know if these are edible or not, so I will uh, swerve that. Mushrooms are pretty good for lighting fires with. There's a black kind that I haven't seen in here. It's called the King's something or other. Really good for fire lighting, but this is bone dry, so I really think this will be... Plenty of wood there. Everything's pretty damp around here, so I don't know how well this is gonna take. We've had some absolutely torrential rain recently, so. Time to carve the old pumpkin. It's getting dark now. Just having a chili and rice. I do like these Wayfarer meals because you can eat them hot or cold, so if your stove fails, you're pretty good. Yeah, not sponsored at all. The only thing I'm using in this camp that I haven't paid for is a through dock gear designed by the UK SBS, a couple of guys, Special Forces, and it's really good gear. I was buying it long before these empty stuff. Really Gucci. My fire, unfortunately, has died, so I'm going to attempt the wood stove. See how we get on there. So just while we're eating, and get started one of the haunted places on the Isle of Man. There's a place called Suwellen Hill which is on their way to Peel. Peel by the way has got a castle which is supposedly haunted as well but we'll go back to Suwellen Hill. I was going to camp there but it's so steep I wasn't sure if there'd be a spot maybe in a future camp. Centuries ago women charged with witchcraft and the Isle of Man has got a very strong history of executing women they believed were charged with witchcraft. I briefly mentioned Castletown Square. A woman and her son were seen riding broomsticks to make, in a field to make crops grow, and they were executed by being burned to death in Castletown Square. There's actually a placard in the middle of the square. I've shown that before. But back to Slowellen Hill, witchcraft is massive on the island. I mean, this place I'm in right now, I'm not gonna lie, feels a bit Blair witchy. But once they were decided by the courts or whoever that they were guilty of witchcraft, they were taken to the top of the mountain. Now this hidden trees, didn't have trees centuries ago up there. It was just a big hill. That was a post-World War II thing for employment. But essentially they'd bring these women to the top of the hill, put them in wooden barrels with spikes and basically roll them down the hill. If they died, they were proclaimed innocent, pretty savage. And obviously their belief is if you're a witch, you wouldn't be dead from that but there's some ghostly cries can be heard up there. Witch-like characters have been seen at night and those that were deemed to be a lesser of a witch who weren't executed were deemed to live out the rest of their days on that desolate hillside. And to this day, witch-like cries can be heard from that hillside. So yeah, if you're ever out that way at nighttime, go and have a look, see for yourself. It's got dark pretty quick. So we're gonna do this pumpkin now, taking shape complete silence in here at the moment. I put my warm jacket on. Right, let's finish off the pumpkin. These are brilliant. I've started using these little tea light things, just so light. Not the best, but she'll do. Adds to the ambience. Oh. As you can see, I don't know if you can see actually. There's nothing to see in here at the moment. It's my little camp. As you can see, it's complete darkness. Interesting. Oh, I wonder what's lived in there. Huh. 
So this is my humble abode at present. Got the USB fairy lights up, just why not? It's pitch black. Right, let's see if I can get this little wood stove going. The wood is so wet around here. Let's hope, we'll see how wet everything is. Yeah, everything's soaking. We'll give it a go. Hope you can see me. It's pitch black here and uh, we're down to the GoPro because I've had a bit of a battery issue on the other camera, but hey, right. Right, so Milne Town, which is near Ramsey on the island, is known to be the most haunted house on the Isle of Man. The historic house has two ghosts, one former lady of the house and the other an evil spirit who takes up joy in scaring visitors. You can be a visitor and Milne Town has been known to do ghost tours. I've been there for food before, it's got a beautiful garden, uh, but yeah, never spent the night, I'm not sure I'd want to. So Castle Mona in Douglas, it was built in 1804, became a hotel in 1831. Ever since then there have been many ghosts, sightings and reports. One of these ghosts is a lady in green who's regularly seen around the Dickens bar within the castle. Another is a set of ghost twin girls. I mean, that to me sounds a little bit like The Shining, who frequently pop up on the foot of beds of people in the middle of the night. Uh, but yeah, it's in, a, it's in a poor state at the moment. I don't think anyone's uh, gonna be sleeping there anytime soon. Another one from Castletown, Witch's Mill. So according to stories perpetrated by a, a gentleman called Gerald Gardner, the Witch's Mill, before it came a museum, uh, open to the general public, was a building used by witches as a dancing ground in the 19th century. I mean, my school that I went to was not far from there, and we always knew it as the Witch's Mill then as well. So, Peel Castle, I mentioned that before. The Moddy Dew. Soldiers and guards from back in the day have long been aware of the Moddy Dew, a large black apparition, the shape of a dog, who strolled the lands of Peel Castle. Soldiers who needed to lock up the castle would travel in pairs to safeguard against this black dog. One night in 1666, a soldier had a few too many whiskies, made the trip on his own. What should have been a task no longer than two or three minutes took over an hour. Finally, the drunken soldier's screams were heard at the door. The other soldiers sat in terror as the muddy do as they knew. The fearsome ghost tormented their colleague. After a few minutes, the doors burst open and a lone soldier fell in. His clothes were tattered and bloodstained, much like the rest of his skin. He just sat by the fire, mesmerised, and never spoke again. The oldest street on the island in Peel, Castle Street, is well known for people walking through the street and feeling ice-cold hands reach out to them. These ice-cold hands are said to belong to a pair of ill-behaved school children who still wander the streets and various apartments, chilling people to the bone and scaring them to the core. I mean, I've been down that street, it's very narrow. Another haunted area, which is from the capital in Douglas, is due to a mass cholera grave. So in June 1832, cholera arrived on the Isle of Man. The fatal disease swept from India along trade routes to Moscow and then to Europe and England. Newspapers reported the epidemic finding its way to Liverpool in May 1832, and a month later, it reared its head on the island. It caused panic and killed 83 people who were all buried together in a mass grave in St George's Church. The newspaper at the time implied that the number of people who died could have been lower if this weren't how people reacted to their deaths. I mean, I've been to this area. Apparently, you can see lumps in the ground where they were buried. No way the GoPro's picking that up. What is that in the distance? You can kind of just see a light. Uh, you're never going to see that. Maybe it's a car. Okay, so back to my story. Castle Russian. Uh, it's known for having the White Lady, a ghost that can be seen from the top of the castle. And there's also been various reports of people who, you can go in here, you say it's a, it's a tourist attraction. I've seen various things happen inside the castle. Been there plenty of times and never seen anything myself. And let's not forget Matthew Hassel's grave at Church Bend's, the, the vampire grave. It's got chains around it and as the story goes, he, during his wake, he sat up and screamed and they staked him to death. He wasn't allowed to have any family members buried with him. 
they put chains around his uh, his grave and that's that's been a story forever even my my dad says he heard that story when he was a kid so there you go vampires in castletown and i would say one of the most reported haunted places on the island is the gaiety theater a particular seat within the theater i think it's b i want to say b14 could be wrong i'll put the right number here but various people have seen somebody sit, sat in that place what i was mentioning before about that murder before that happened in this area not the 1931 the later one in the 90s the offender i think was the last person in the united kingdom to be sentenced to death uh, the other man was the last place to do that i don't actually know if it happened or not i don't think so i don't think anyone's been executed for a long time but yeah uh, some of our laws here are a little bit different might i say <laughs> to the uh, mainland uk right it's getting really cold now i think i'm gonna get in there shortly hope you're enjoying these uh spooky stories it's always a little bit of apprehension when you're camping on your own especially when you're you're talking about these things it's right at the forefront of your mind then isn't it oh, but the stars are starting to come out i'll try and get a time lapse as well we'll see how that goes and this is why i do not rate the lanshan tent it is worse than sleeping in a coffin, I would imagine. The wind's picked up a little bit. It's about 11 o'clock now. I've been out for a little wander in the woods, taking some night photography, all on the iPhone. As many of you will know, I pretty much do most things on a phone. Um, all the editing for these videos is done on a mobile phone. Not heard or seen anything. Very peaceful, actually. So uh, I'm going to set up the uh, GoPro night lapse hopefully get some beautiful stars the stars are looking good in the photos that i was taking and uh yeah i will obviously have a camera attached if anything goes bump in the night i'll let you know thanks for joining me on this halloween special hope you enjoyed the adventure of it all like i do love it to be fair don't rate this tent and i'm gonna get myself tucked up in bed hopefully for a nice cozy night i'll see you in the morning Good morning from the woods. A peaceful night, relatively undisturbed. I did hear footprints outside the tent about 2 a.m. But I stuck my head out and it was just sheep. So not too worried about that. There's plenty of sheep in this area. Signs of scat everywhere, so as expected. But no supernatural goings on. Certainly that I'm aware of. We did have a GoPro out all night looking at the stars, but again haven't looked at that yet did a bit more research last night because i had good phone signal up here on some of the murders in this area and apparently that one from the 90s was a contract killing he was paid to kill this person he was found some days later after they discovered the body and uh, yeah he was the last person as i mentioned in britain to get the death penalty but they changed that for life in prison i don't even know if he's out now that was the 90s so who knows proper remote area for that kind of goings on the next wild camp is going to be a military gear wild camp i'm very fortunate to have a really good military surplus store on the island called q stores a guy called barry he loves a bit of wild camping as well and he's basically said to me i can come in grab whatever whatever i want and we'll we'll go for it so let me know what you'd like to see he's got a really cool sas special forces bivy that's only issue to those guys could try that out or you've already seen me in the french commando tent i'm sure there's other alternatives but a complete from everything from cut gear to the bergen to the sleep system to the lighting everything will be military gear only so you know where you're at with that stuff it's bomb proof let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see me in but i think what i'll do now is make up the tent and get out of here i've had some pancakes for breakfast They've hit the spot nicely. 
as you can see the wind has picked up overnight but I'm in quite a sheltered area all good right let's get to making up that tent and let's Kazavak out of here Leave no trace, fully made up. Time to hike back now. Cheers for joining me, and I'll see you guys on the next adventure. Hopefully the military surplus one. Have a great week, guys. All the best. Mm -hmm.